and now Icelandic horses. Yeah. Chapman was right. They have to be horses. It doesn't matter what size they are. Icelandic horses, because of their genetics, are always considered horses. Mm -hmm. It's true. And for that fact, that'll be $5 to madrva.org. Yeah. Hey. This is Quid Pro Roll, a fantasy live play adventure where a party of unlikely heroes embark on a quest to bring dragons back to their world. MadRVA.org is supporting uh, a lot of people in the Richmond, Virginia area and surrounding areas. They do a lot of really cool stuff. They're part of the community. They're a nonprofit. They do a ton of really cool work in the area. They're a really cool organization. Your money goes a very long, long way towards helping them accomplish their goal of making sure that folks who are experiencing homelessness are not doing so without being able to eat food, without being able to have shelter those sorts of things. Um, they also do a lot of really cool community work, just generally speaking. So it's not limited exclusively to folks who are experiencing homelessness. They do a lot of work overall. Uh, over the course of COVID, they did a lot of fundraising so that they could pe keep people from losing their homes um, due to things like foreclosure. So super cool organization, super helpful. Uh, please go support them financially or by spreading the word or by volunteering or whatever you can do for them. Okay. Now I'll turn it over to Alex. Alpha Alex. <laughs> and anonymous Alex goes, I am the DM now. <laughs> Look, at me. Look at me. I am the DM now. Can you imagine though? Yes. Often. It, regularly. It would be pretty funny if we just like had a, uh, anonymous alex run like an episode of qpr and then had alpha alex run like a quest master scenario oh, i'm here for it <laughs> you find yourself in the abandoned stoke and good manor you have been looking for a mirror and the only one that you found did damage to your friends by you yeeting it over the railing uh but you have not found any magic mirror what you have found is a lot of echoes of spirits mostly the spirits of a man a woman and a small child though most recently you saw the figure of a young man working on something in a magical space that is where we are now with ram big thigh after the disappearance of that apparition I just realized that we're starting with Ram Big Thigh in a room full of probably dangerous magical components. It is the D&D &D equivalent of a bull in a china shop. So is there anything immediately on the table, like currently? So there's just some tools on the table? You do see some tools. I will have you, let's see, what, what would you roll for this? What, what would you roll for this? Arcana? Mm, technically not for what roll an investigation just it's it's worked for us so far we're gonna keep on i mean are they like herbal components no oh well i'm at a loss that's a 16 weirdly enough you know what these are whoa these are the components for crafting artists like really fancy mirrors i'm not sure how you know this uh but you do huh Okay, the this 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 isn't really what I'm looking for. Um he uh Ram is just gonna wipe his hand over the table and just shove everything onto the floor. Everything clatters to the ground in a cacophony. Uh he's there he's gonna sit down at the chair at the this this um work desk and put his feet up on the desk. His oh yeah. His his hooves. His foobs. His foobs. <laughs> All right. Uh, hearing the, you guys hear a clatter from the room that Ram Big Thigh just walked into. Uh, I think, I think Gaswin charges in with his short sword drawn and he's like, I knew we were going to have to fight ghosts before we let, uh oh. Did you just, did you sweep? All of that stuff off that table and onto the floor? I've got to think. i got to think about what we're going to do. 
Just nothing is working for me here. F first, I, I hear there's a woman, but when I get there, she's gone. And then there was this woman in the mirror, but I turned around and she's gone. And I can't find any flutes for the, this this wine. What am I supposed to do? That is quite the conundrum. Quite the conundrum. I mean, you could. You could start, maybe, just as a concept, by looking for a magic mirror. Because that's what we're here for. I'm going to open one of the drawers of the desk. You open the drawer to the desk and you find a, le a leather bound book that age has yellowed its pages significantly. Damn it, not a mirror. And I slammed the drawer shut. I should have seen that coming. <laughs> um, proceed. I think I think Gaswin is going to take one look at the tools and be like, meh, and then start rummaging through drawers himself. All right. Um, which drawers? Like the ones like where Ram Big Thigh is? Or are you looking through the room overall? I mean, wait. All right, so there's a big table in the middle of the room. Yes. And then is there like a lot of drawers around the edges of the room as well? There's a lot of chaos in the room, so there could be, and you just don't easily see it. Eh, being covered in little glass cuts, I think I think Gasman's going to start with the apparent drawers rather than be like, I'm going to move a bunch of stuff and hopefully find some more drawers. You are going to find, as you ruffle through, something that's dependent entirely on what your investigation check is. You guys are rolling a lot of investigation checks this game. You're the one who's telling us to roll investigation checks. We I gotta mean, we gotta split up and look for clues, gang. Look, that just happens. To, you guys aren't asking about Arcana things. Yes? It's a net 20. Beautiful. So you are going to be able to go through the drawers, going through sheafs and sheafs of paper, and you're going to find notes on several notable important things that stand out to you. One is the craft of mirror making. Two is the craft of enchanting. Three are psychological documents talking about the emotional relationships between family members and the brain's reaction to trauma. They're two separate documents. I mean, okay, but even so, like finding them in generally the same place, Gasman's like, the hell is going on in here? It's like really messed up family psychiatry and mirror making, magic mirror making, all in one. Was, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I'm getting something. I don't know that this is like a magic mirror of truth telling of like, Oh, it reveals your innermost thoughts. I'm starting to wonder if somebody crammed a therapist into a mirror. <laughs> Cause that's kind of what these documents are reading. Like is happening here. There's a lot of like, uh, Gaswin holds up and ruffles a sheaf of papers. There's a lot of things about like family dynamics. He ruffles another sheaf of papers. There's things about trauma and the mind's reaction to it. And then he holds up like the, the small book and he's like, here's a bunch of stuff on making mirrors. And he holds up another sheaf of papers and here's a bunch of stuff on making things magical. So like if I put all of this together, what I get is magic therapist in a mirror. That's that's the picture I'm seeing, which honestly, if that's the case, then maybe this is exactly the magic item that Malam and his family need. Bronla walks in the room. Did you find something? <laughs> Gaswin begins the ranch again. Gaswin is like mildly winded from the rant he just had. And like he takes he takes a deep breath and he is like, <gasps> I think all this paperwork shows that they were making a magic therapist mirror. Oh. Well, that's good, because that's probably what they need. Right? Right? Like, I'd feel comfortable bringing that back to Malm and giving that to him to, like, help resolve familial issues. But if it's, like, if it's going to reveal your innermost thoughts, I'd, uh, that's a bad idea. No one should be doing that. No. 
Bronla's gonna take one look around the room and just go, right, let's let's do this faster. And she's gonna cast detect magic. Wonderful. So what's the area of that spell again? Uh 30 feet from myself. Wonderful. So you cast detect magic and this blue light sort of comes out from you and scans the room. On the wall, behind a cloth is something that begins glowing blue. It's about two feet tall, one foot wide. Perfect. She's going to walk over and pull the cloth aside. So you pull the cloth aside, you see a sleek black face. It's not just that it's a mirror. It appears to be some kind of scrying mirror. She's going to slowly put the fabric back over. Um... I found a mirror. I think Doss bursts in through the door from the other room like, yeah! <laughs> Not, I, 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 calm down, Goss. I don't think it's the mirror. Smash it? No. Well, well, it makes you think it's not the mirror if it is a mirror that you found in this room. Bronla pulls it back. Do we, do we all see the, like, or is it, is it exclusively Bronla that's seeing the face in the mirror? No, there is no face in the mirror. The, the the glass in the mirror, the face of the mirror. Oh. It's a, it, it's, it's a glossy black glass. Okay, so it, it looks, it's reflective, but it's also black. No, there's not is. just like a person in the mirror just kind of <laughs> hanging out. Like I don't, I don't know. I now understand why you gave me like a look of like, wait, what about the face? Like, th- no, it's the, the face of the, the front of the mirror, the okay. glass of the mirror. Now I understand. And, um, so it almost looks like the surface of, of like obsidian. Yes. It's reflective, but it's black. Yes. Okay. Um, Gazwin's going to like scoot a little closer to it and he's going to take another swig of his invincibility tonic just in case. Um, and he's going to be like, okay, uh, all right. All right. I think, I think I see, I think I see what's going on here. This is. This is really all right. The whole picture is coming together. Why is it dark though? Like, do we need to turn something on? Is it not activate? We need to activate it, probably. Are you looking into the mirror? Yes, Gaswin will look into the mirror. Wonderful, Gaswin. As you look into the mirror, you notice the depths inside the glass begin to ripple, and a face clearly appears in the mirror your own you look at yourself well the the face looks at you with this sense of sympathy and disappointment this is gonna be very hard for me so uh you ever really think about what your family would say if they saw you now? Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure if my family saw me now, what they would say is, "Cause they're dead, okay? So they're not going to be saying anything. I'm not concerned about their thoughts." I don't know that you're being entirely honest with yourself, buddy. Uh, I I think. Are you trying to give me false hope about my family not being... I was there. I watched them get eaten. Like, that. this isn't like a mystery to me. It's not like my family just... This... uh, He turns to the room. He's like, this magic mirror sucks. (laughs) Do we hear any of that? No. All you hear is him (laughs) yelling at himself. Like, yelling into the darkness. Hmm. So (laughs) you're you're getting the fabric back over the mirror. (laughs) You're getting one side of a two-way conversation. It's like when somebody's talking on the phone on, like, the subway or something, and you can hear something juicy, so you're, like, trying not to make it obvious that you're listening, but you're like, oh, God, what did Margaret do? Like, <laughs> Whenever you put the um, the fabric back over it, Ram's like, wait, wait one second. Wait, before you do that. And he whips it back, and he stands for a second. Yeah. so as you are looking for your reflection 
you see beyond it into the depths of the darkness of the mirror and it begins to ripple. Your own face, as you would expect from a mirror, comes from the depths and looks at you with this sort of feeling of concern. Do you ever, you ever wonder if like, there's like, more. Um, Ram immediately starts tearing up. <laughs> like, it's okay. You occupy a very small space in an infinite cosmos. But that doesn't mean you're any less valid. Just tears falling out of his eyes. It's <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of You've spot got... starting to come out of his nose. <laughs> <laughs> you can let people in, man. It's not your fault. Uh, he grabs the mirror. Help! Help! <laughs> Bronla has chased the the piece of fabric where Ram has thrown it across the room and is coming back with it like over her face. All right, that that's quite enough of that. We you try to no throw it over. Oh, wait, come on, come on, wait, 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 come on, come on, I want, come on, I want to try. I mean, you'll probably be fine. You, like, try to throw the fabric over the mirror like you try to do with a bird's cage yes. so it thinks it's nighttime that and quiet. That is exactly down. what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ram, like, uh, did somebody pull him away from the mirror? I, I couldn't, I can't. I think he, he, he yeah. Bronla covers yeah, Ram, the Yeah, Ram goes, he's, next thing you know, he's just, like, in the corner of the room. Like, <laughs> someone, someone get this man a chocolate bar. So, so I, Gasman walks over to try to reassure Ram. Well, I presume Bronla is trying to keep the mirror covered while Goss is like, let me in there. Goss is like <laughs> grabbing the edge of like Bronla's shirt, like biggest like puppy dog eyes. He can muster like, come on, let me do the mirror. Come on, let me do it. Let me look. Let me look. Uh, Gaswin walks over and tries to put a hand on like uh, Ram's back, but he's a gnome and Ram's a satyr. And so I think he ends up with his hand, like, just above Ram's butt. And he's like, hey, man, listen, listen. Amir doesn't know you. Amir just thinks it knows you. Like, I, this is all, this is all pseudoscience nonsense. You don't have to listen to that. Gaswin is not ready for his own <laughs> healing. That's what I'm hearing. Gaswin goes to one therapy session and then is like, it's nonsense. It doesn't work. Ram gives Gaswin a look, the, the a look that just says like, "I have been seen. <laughs> this mirror has seen me, and I don't know what to do about it." Gaswin, Gaswin, uh, so Ram's trying to express all of this in his look, and Gaswin is just seeing big watery eyes, and he's like. Uh, uh, I don't look. I'm pretty sure that's our mirror, so we could just grab it and go at this point. I feel, yeah, yeah, no, let's absolutely do that. And Bronn's gonna try to very carefully lift this mirror with the fabric still over it. Is Goss still trying to like while trying to keep Goss away? All right, wonderful. So, as you take the mirror and the group leaves the room you see down the hallway this this figure of this woman who turns looks at you once and nods before disappearing see she said i could look into it i don't think that's what she was saying at all goss is the peregrine took of this group <laughs> I mean, I mean, look, Bradley, like, it's, uh, at this point, like, I, all but two of us have seen it. And so, like, what is, what? There are only four of you! What's the harm? What's the harm in one more, right? Like, if you don't want to, that's fine. But, like, Gus wants to. Like, I don't, I feel like we shouldn't be limiting people. <sighs> like, I, I just, I, I think, I think if, if they will, if, if he wants to do it, he should be able to do it. Gaslin, are you okay, buddy? 
And Kasman takes another sip of his invincibility ty- tonic. <laughs> Bronla looks from Gaswin to Goss and back and forth again. It's like, all right, listen, I'm not saying you can do it. I need you to confirm that if you do it, you're not going to be in points to Ram. You know. No, I won't turn in. I don't think I'll turn into him. Nobody else shifted to another person. I think it's fine. Entirely what I meant. Everything you do is on you. And she sort of steps away from it. Goss. Goss is going to look into the mirror and just wave like hi, repeatedly. Like hi. All right. So you stare into the depths beyond your own reflection and see it ripple before your own face emerges, looking at you with a feeling of pride and joy. And he goes, Hey, man, you're doing great. <laughs> you too. Keep it up. Keep up the good work, man. You know what? I will. Thanks. Keep being you, buddy. You keep being you. And we'll be us together. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The reflection slowly (laughs) (laughs) fades. Look, it's it's what takes you to be in your best psychological self. And Goss is already there, man. Nope. It doesn't matter if you're intelligent. It matters if you're healthy. No room for improvement. Goss has achieved the maximum apex. I've always wanted to win therapy. I didn't think this would be how. (laughs) (laughs) Aspire to be Goss Hawk. So for the record, You guys only see Goss's reaction. You don't see what the face does. As as Goss is going back and forth with the mirror, Gaswin just kind of, as an aside to Bronla, is like, Hey, see? Did did you really really want to deny him this experience? Is that what you wanted to do? I didn't. I didn't. Bronla reaches over and takes the bottle from Gaswin and swaps it out with a different one. Um, Sobriety juice. (laughs) (laughs) Coffee. (laughs) This is is some uh, red pepper mixed with egg white. (laughs) Uh, Shortly thereafter, Gaswin takes a sip from what he thinks is invincibility tonic and he's like oh i i think i've i think i've unlocked the next level i uh, i it it tastes different now it tastes more powerful i i think yes yes the i can feel the warmth it's the warmth is within me i'm becoming invincible this is amazing there you go buddy the warmth was within you the whole time so since it seems, Bronla, that you are the the leader of this group, <laughs> um, well, one of you is a sobbing mess on the floor. The other is literally too dumb to be anything other than winning at therapy. And one of you is clearly masking the uncomfortable psychological truths he experienced in the mirror by drinking. So, yeah, it seems like it's you. She's going to grab the fabric and walk up sort of sideways to Gost where she cannot see herself in the mirror uh, and say, oh, all right, then, buddy, are, are, are you done? Because we kind of do need to be getting on our way unless we're going to figure out this ghost thing. It's uh, show show of hands. Do we want to figure out the ghost thing? Nah. No I, hands. All I right. didn't know if you wanted to see like a specific hand sign for no. Besides, so I just kept my hands down. Goss is gonna hold his hands up and go. What do I do with my hands? Uh, n- nothing. You're 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 fine. You're fine. I'm gonna hold them out to Bronla. <laughs> he demands a piece. <laughs> Bronla's just gonna like reach through the hands and pat. Goss on the head. No, that's that's all right. We're not doing that. And she's gonna <laughs> throw the fabric back over the mirror and pick it up and put it under her arm. The journey back is unremarkable. You travel through the wood, and while there is still this looming feeling of despair in these woods, 
you you have a feeling of almost being protected by this mirror. There's this sense of fulfillment's not really the word, but as if this sense of personal satisfaction is shielding you from things that lurk in the dark. You travel through and you come back to the new homestead for Stoke, the Stoken Good family. Standing outside, currently working on a fence, is Malm. He looks up, wipes his wipes his the back of his hand across his brow and smiles at you guys. Ooh, hey there. You uh seem a little a little worse for wear. Oh, I, I'm not worse for wear. Uh, I'm I'm invincible. These are just my clothes. Why is uh why is your tall friend naked? <laughs> I'm starting to think that that's his natural state. Well, I would argue that's everyone's natural state. That's a good argument to have, honestly. Goss is going to start slowly taking his shirt off at this. Oh, no, no, friend. There's no need for that. So, uh, how did, uh, how'd your journey go? You, uh, you find any, um, uh, magic mirrors? <laughs> Bronla gestures vaguely to the place under her arm. Oh, like, like this mirror. Oh, yes! Was, is that the right one? Was there... Is that... I surely hope that this is the right oh, one. Did something happen with it? Bron is going to pat Ram on the shoulder. <laughs> there, there, big fella. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Don't listen to what the big <laughs> bad mayor told you. Oh, that's... Uh, that's concerning. And you, uh, you think this will uh, fix my family? Oh, no. No. Oh. Oh. Uh. Well, uh, that sure is disappointing. I'm gonna be honest, Mal. I I think we all we all kind of figured on the way out there that at the end of the day, family, you're not you're not gonna fix it with with some magic some magic items. You gotta you gotta fix it the good old the good old fashioned way, which is. By all, all of you coming together and, and having a conversation about your feelings. And then if if Uncle Fred, like, pulls, you know, like, if he pulls a wand out, he's like, I'll fireball this whole place. And I'll take all of you with me. And, like, that's that's just where you're at right then, you know? Like, I don't I don't think a magic mirror fixes that. I, I've, I've, I'm personally of the opinion the, the solution was within you the whole time. How uh, much has he been drinking? Oh, tons. The whole time we've been gone, honestly. Oh, boy. Uh, it sounds like... And she, she, she motions him over. She motions his mom over. And she's like, I switched him to coffee when we left the manor. That's uh, some ways away. I know. He, uh... He's very drunk. <laughs> He's a... Uh... He's a. Uh, does he need to lie down? Oh, absolutely. And she's gonna. Gaswin takes another. No. Nope. Oh, go ahead. Do it. I was. I was just gonna say Gaswin takes a swig off the uh, flask and then is like, "I'm invincible." And like the as he says that, just the waft of like high octane alcohol smell just like travels through the party. Well, uh. All of you look very worse for wear, and I can't tell you how thankful I am for you all finding my family's relic. Could could I could I set you up with a nice meal and a bed for the night at the at the very barest? Honestly, it sounds delightful for me. <laughs> he nods and, and and we'll get you a. He, the, Mom looks over at Ram. Like, we'll get you a mug of hot cocoa, friend. Ram just kind of nods. Hey guys, do you want to hear more therapy sessions for the characters in this game and potentially other QPR characters? Donate to Mad RPA! <laughs> that is why we are doing this and why I am trying to psychologically destroy everyone more than normal. You are all set up with beds for the night and feel a sense of accomplishment that you've delivered the mirror to its rightful owner. As you sleep, you dream of a young boy raised in 
a terrible situation, creating a mirror in an effort to change the heart of his father. When you wake up, next to your head on your pillow is a coupon. It says, for everything you've done for me, whatever I can do, my friend, with the symbol of Moonsy's shop on the back. Yay! Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah! Does that mean Moonsy just abandoned us at this place? He didn't give us a Yeah, we live here now. Find your own way home, my friends! I have other things to do! <laughs> I was so hoping Goss would look into the mirror because I was like so excited for that. <laughs> I was so excited to do it. I think uh, the good news is is that uh, Gaswin, at the very least, can travel to and from the space between spaces and can just let everybody pop out at a conveniently located dragon shrine somewhere around Gaswin, the continent. Gaswin's the friend with the car. <laughs> Uh, all that coupon was good for one free magic item at Moonsy's store. Then I'm glad I didn't say the final thought I had, which was, Goss eats the coupon. <laughs> <laughs> we know in our heart of hearts. Yeah, yeah, he's... Yeah, he did. Gaslin's over here like, you uh, got a book of vile darkness in there? Maybe an eye of Vecna? This this sounds like Mal trying all know. to pretend to be Gaswin. We all know. I don't look. I did my yeah. best Gaswin impression, trying to psychologically destroy you. So that's fair. Um, yeah. The I will I will say Gaswin's complete rejection of the concept that he could ever be at fault for anything. Uh, well, you know, there's a reason why he's on the bad guy team. Well, in, in, hey, QPR fans, enjoy this deep cut psychological analysis <laughs> of this tertiary character. <laughs> I mean, that's 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 what this was all about, right? That was that's why we got together to stream. Yeah, was to do deep cut psychological analysis of tertiary <laughs> characters. Yeah. People yeah. are like, we want to bring back Alarian archives, but this time make it therapy. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, guys, um, if if the guys from Cinema Therapy ever want to guest on PR and do a psychological analysis of any of the characters, uh, please, I love you so much. <laughs> Alan Jono, please. I love you so much. But you want to know what would bring you all the same kind of emotional fulfillment that may, that, that Goss felt looking into the mirror? Donating to Mad RVA. <laughs> we are we have been doing this whole stream so that we can raise some money for them because they do a lot of good in the RVA community. And um come on, make make the psychological damage of these characters into tangible good. And segueing from that, Alex, Jenna, my beloveds, where can we find you if we need, desperately need, more of you two? Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, uh, the first place that you can find us, and most recently, Alpha Alex from you know, Alpha Comics and Games right here, is on Horse Girls. We just did the Unicorns of Balinor series with Alex. And it was so delightful. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, Horse Girls. You can find us on Horse Girls. You can find us on another D&D podcast, an Animorphs one called Dungeons and Draken Beams. You can find Jenna on Botched. And uh, oh man, where else are we? God damn it. Where yeah. else are we? <laughs> where, where the hell else are we? Surprise Deck Book Club! <laughs> Jenna, I think that you also chill out sometimes on Twitch. Uh, occasionally, I have been known to do so. Not since I moved, but soon coming back. At Jenna Chill everywhere, including twitch.tv slash Jenna Chill. That would be uh, with, with one. Not, with not that. With not that. Um, with one not two. Singular. But one. L. Always got to take those L's. <laughs> I was going to say, Alex, 
you're not you're not allowed to take L's because your character has it all together. I think I think I have to take that L this time. And you can find me, Josh, and Chapman as always on Quid Pro Roll. Uh, if you're watching this, likelihood that you know we are partially also doing this to get because it is Gabe's summer break, so we are not going to release main feed until he is back home. Uh, but mostly Matt RVA, do the donating thing. That's that's honestly the big thing. Uh, the thing I want you to take away from this, donate to Matt RVA. But you can find us at Quid Pro Roll. Uh, Josh, I believe we can also find you on another podcast. Uh, you can also find me on the very, very originally named Goblins and Growlers podcast, uh, which is a podcast with Brandon and myself where we talk about TTRPG news and adjacent material, such as uh, the Return to Dark Tower board game, which incredible that that even is a thing that happened because Dark Tower in the first place was very expensive to manufacture, very hard to program, and then only had a like cult following. So the fact that some company was like, hey, you know what we should do? We should re-release this as a not only physical game, but with a mobile app uh, like component that's part of it. It's it's crazy. It's wild. Check check out the show. Uh, we talk about all kinds of stuff like that. And um, we actually missed we missed this past week. So don't listen to our most recent episode because it's 30 seconds long and it's me talking about how uh, we f- I had technical difficulties and lost all but 20 minutes of my audio as part of those technical difficulties. So uh, go back into the archives and find older episodes and check those out. And then uh, you can find all of us on, well, you can find Alex Chapman, myself, Alon and Brandon on regular QPR episodes, uh, which we release every week on Wednesdays. And Chapman, I believe outside of your appearances on QPR, you have told me, and I quote, I do not wish to be perceived. Is that still the case? <laughs> you you can find me or you can now find me. I just don't update social media very often. Find him in the whispers of children and in the songs within shadows. Find him in the glimpses of a maiden's dream and the feeling of summer finally ending. These intangible concepts bring you to Chapman. <laughs> but especially to Ram Big Thigh. Please, Chapman, please bring Ram Big Thigh to like every secondary <laughs> we do. Oh, I'm here. I love him so much. All right, guys. I adore all of you. Jenna, Alex, thank you so much for being here. You guys are the best. Uh, I am super excited to see you guys when we do our final unicorn episode, uh, even though I will absolutely cry afterwards. It's fine. It's cool. It's chill. Uh, and it's not because we're talking about one of the saddest movies ever. Um, <laughs> anyway, that is all for us tonight, guys. I really hope you all enjoyed this. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. And I am out of thoughts, only vibes. Good night, everybody. Why y'all? Hey, rollers, editor Scott here. If you'd like to help support the Mutual Aid Distribution in Richmond, Virginia, or MADRVA for short, please check out madrva.org and find out more. You can help volunteer, donate supplies or money, or even just shout them out on social media to help spread awareness and help others in need. Again, that's madrva.org. Solidarity, not charity.